A polar vortex system in Canada loses steam and begins retreating north. Meanwhile, an atmospheric river affects much of the southern U.S. And there it is. Any guesses where that atmospheric river is? Yeah, that's it coming up from Mexico, the Pineapple Express surging into Texas and Oklahoma, and then over into Tennessee and Kentucky. We also see an upper level low across Nevada and Utah, giving us that familiar comma cloud shape back in this area here, and up to the north, the polar vortex that's way up north of the US. And there you go, any doubt that it's there? That's it, a big whirlpool up there in Canada, correlated with the cold air at the surface. And that's the cold air during the mid-afternoon, minus teens to minus 20s earlier this morning. We started out much colder with minus 31 at Prince Albert, just up the road from Saskatoon. And we start out with our current surface chart. This is going to be mid-afternoon. And there's that Pineapple Express flowing up and over that polar front through the central U.S. Now, there is a caveat with this. There's one front that I did not really identify very well, and that's going to be in the eastern U.S. Can you see it there? Well, let's take a trip from south to north. 80s in southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, and that rapidly diminishes into the 60s in the Carolinas, then 50s in New York and 50s and 40s in Maine. So obviously there's a transition in this area here, and that appears to be where we go from 80s and 70s down into the 60s. What we've actually got going on here is a bit of cold air damming, and that's due to the influence of the Appalachians right in this area. They get into that southerly flow, and that cold air doesn't can't, can't really go anywhere. So it piles up against the mountains right here in the Piedmont region. And as a result, temperatures are in the 60s with fog and stratus. But down in the coastal areas, the temperatures have come up into the 70s. So there is a little small scale front right in this area here. So I didn't quite draw that because it would have messed up the map just a little bit. Maybe I, maybe I should have done that. But anyway, I've explained that to you bit of a warm front right there and let's head back to the west another active frontal zone there in texas with that moisture isentropic lift the southeasterly flow right off the surface going up and over that cold air mass and that's producing some of the rain and showers in that area just one little spot there of thunder up around paris and hugo oklahoma out west there's our upper level low spinning around near St. George and Cedar City and producing some snow showers. And then further out to the west, you can see that frontal transition zone down there in Southern California. Heading up north, another strong Pacific system approaching Western Canada. That's going to be it right there and connecting into a second low, an older low out there off Valdez. And that warm air is flowing north. You can see the temperatures are up in the 20s, which is fairly mild for that part of British Columbia. So yeah, that's the warm air on the move. And we go a little bit further north. It is also milder as well up in Alaska. Teens and 20s, not really anything below zero. And then as we go east into the Northwest Territories, it rapidly drops off. There's the eroding Arctic air, minus 31, out around uh, Fort, uh, one of those forts, I can't remember the name of that, but yeah, that's gonna be it right in that area there. And then we just get back into some regular old garden variety Arctic air out there around Baffin Island. So this area here. And then circling around back to Hudson Bay, well, you know, you can see the polar vortex in the thickness pattern. You see the blue lines, that kind of represents the mean temperature profile in the lowest four or five kilometers. And that paints out a cold axis right there, a cold blob centered across southern Nunavut. And that's the core of the polar vortex. And on one side, we've got warm air advection and the Sea of Labrador bringing warm air northward. You can see the temperatures are quite warm out there in northern Labrador, 43 degrees 
32 along the coast, 40, so that's very warm. And on the other side, very cold conditions. However, most of that cold air obviously is heading into Ontario and Quebec. Very little of it expected to come south. We're looking at Texas, Louisiana over here on the right, and checking out that frontal zone. It is running from about Texarkana to just south of Dallas, south of Stephenville, and then back up towards La Mesa and Hobbs. So roughly in that area, it gets a little more diffuse out in that region, but you can see south of that frontal boundary, lots of 80s. 81 at Tyler, 81 at Longview, 80 at Nacogdoches, and 80 degrees at Georgetown. And with that, some high dew points. Those are in the 60s, and as we speak, I've got our air conditioner running. So just not quite done with summer just yet. Cold air up to the north, but doesn't look like it's coming south very much. Let's return to that upper level chart. Looking at the current conditions, you can see the Pacific is open. That's going to be a positive EPO pattern. The polar vortex across Canada right there in a split flow pattern. The jet, one segment up there in Canada and the other down to the south. And that's bringing up some of that tropical moisture. So going forward, obviously that trough there is going to have an impact on the weather on the west coast and a couple more troughs pretty far upstream. So running that forward, Let's take a look and we see that breakdown of the polar vortex and by Thursday actually by Saturday it's pretty much gone a strong trough moving on to the west coast right there another lurking out there in the Pacific and there's another in the north central US so this is kind of a wavy zonal progressive pattern however some changes coming up for next week and let's see how that unfolds Going into Sunday and Monday, it starts to get a little bit blocky here. Cutoff highs start appearing in Alaska and Canada. These are cut off from the northern stream and some blocking there across Alaska as well. And typically when the pattern gets like this, the models have a more difficult time handling the features. So I'm not really expecting much beyond this. This is going to be Thursday next week. This is probably about the limits of reliability on these models. But as we can see, quite a bit of weather there in the US to contend with. And with those height falls, that's gonna spell a change to colder weather. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the broad scale picture. The details, we're not gonna to pay too much attention to that, but the large scale indications, that does give useful information. You can see a very deep low right there. That's telling me that there's plenty of cold air in the lower levels across much of the northern U.S. and Canada. So some of that could be slipping south. That could have an influence on the weather as we get towards the second half of December. So we could be heading into a colder pattern. And yeah, this is a positive PNA pattern, which we do not have right now. And that could help kick some more cold air southward and out around this low pressure area. So some changes coming up towards Christmas. The details I'm not really too clear on, but it uh, does look like things will get a little bit more interesting here. So here's one way we can see things heading our direction. Starting out for today, high pressure, the fronts down into Texas, this is for today. And we can also see the polar air up to the north. That's it, where we have the troughing indicated by the thickness patterns. So running that forward, we can see most of the cold air heads off east. This is going to be for Thursday. You can see the thermal troughing concentrated mostly in the Hudson Bay region and Quebec and Ontario and a warm up across much of the northern plains. Taking that into the weekend, Friday and Saturday, the cold air heads on off to the east. And that's replaced by this gradient down to the south, little frontal boundary kind of hanging in place, and then another frontal system heading for the west coast that has kind of a occluded appearance because I don't see very much in the way of thickness lines coming into that low. 
And then going into Sunday and Monday, the main frontal zone down there in California, rain's starting up. So that's going to be for Sunday morning. And we start getting these Pacific systems moving into the western U.S. and out into the Rockies and the Central Plains by Tuesday and Wednesday. And that will change the weather for most of the eastern half of the country. So this is going to be for Wednesday. Front coming into Texas. Occlusion up there into the northern plains. And a warm front about like that. So that's how you go about reading these maps. Meanwhile, you can see the changes up there in Alaska. Building another polar high up there in Yukon. So that's a big mass of Arctic air that appears to be starting to come together. And going into Wednesday into Thursday, you can see the pressures up to 1056 millibars up there in Yukon. So that's the start of more Arctic air. Whether that comes south, I'm not totally sure just yet. But uh, pressures are definitely high up to the north. The last chart, 234 to 240 hours, big 1048 millibar high from Victoria Island to Fort Nelson. And that's quite a bit different from what we have. And that should push a lot of cold air south. You can see the thermal troughing right there in the northern plains. So a lot of cold air on its way south. Now you compare that to what we have right now. That's what we have right now. Do you see a big 1048 millibar high up north? No. In fact, nothing above 1024 millibars up in this area, just a 1032 millibar high down here. And you compare that to 240 hours from now, that's a much different picture. So cold air will be coming south around the 15th through the 20th of December. In the short term, here's the atmospheric river chart, the IVT, Integrated Vapor Transport, and that's painting out that atmospheric river right there from Baja, California to North Texas and over to Tennessee. So this is going to be for midday today. And then going forward in time, there it is across Arkansas, Oklahoma. That's going to be for tomorrow, so kind of a multi-day rain event from Oklahoma to Tennessee and then shifting eastward into the Carolinas. So that will be Friday. All right, and then we set our sights to the west. There's our next system, Pacific Moisture heading into Oregon and California. And then going into Saturday and Sunday, that affects California as well. IVT values about 400 to 500. So that's gonna be a weak to moderate event, maybe more towards moderate. And then it moves inland, those values go down. And then it starts picking up some more Pacific moisture as we get into the middle of next week. And the Gulf gets active. There's that feed of moisture, there's the other feed of moisture. So we could be looking at rain, heavy rain, maybe even thunderstorms around next week. Have to look at the calendar. Yeah, that's going to be Tuesday the 13th. So sometime around Monday to Wednesday, the possibility for some thunderstorms, maybe even some severe weather with that deep fetch of moisture. And yeah, I do have some concerns about severe weather in the southeast, somewhere around the Wednesday to Thursday time frame. Let's take a look at those temperature records for this afternoon, 80s from Houston all the way to Charleston, South Carolina. And these temperatures in Alabama and Mississippi, those appear to be breaking records for the date. For tomorrow, a continuation of the warm weather in the same area. On Friday, a little moderation, but very much the same. Temperatures close to seasonal values for Saturday. Likewise on Sunday. Likewise on Monday. And the same thing on Tuesday. But if that GFS model verifies, we could see the start of some cold air appearing in the northwestern and north central U.S. 
And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I'm going to leave you with some footage from Greg out there around San Antonio just a few days ago. So enjoy that. And thanks to our new supporters, James Erickson and Thomas Jagger. I think Thomas was a previous supporter. I don't know if your uh, subscription lapsed there or you increased it. But nevertheless, I very much appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Hope to see you all back here on Friday. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday, and we'll see you here in a couple days. Take care. Bye-bye.